Okay, in this video, I want to show you the uh, discrete force transform response uh, running the, uh, action. Automatic, uh, uh, as you can see, I've got uh, actually three programs running here on the screen. Well, actually, this is a, a movie I'm playing back that I, where I recorded the uh, uh, stock market action on uh, Friday, the 13th of March, 2020. Well, that day, the uh, stock did go up uh, in the middle of the coronavirus. Uh, the uh, stock market, uh, as you see, uh, runs in waves, and uh, this was a day that uh, would have been good to... Uh, uh, go long. Uh, now I play the um, and you can see now stock that called SPXL, which is a three times volatile S and P. Uh, and uh, presently, like I said, there's three programs running. The one you see on the right is the discrete Fourier transform of stocks, and uh, it's being updated continually uh, by uh, a uh, macro uh, called Macro Recorder, which uh, is a macro for Windows, and uh, and the uh, stock program is the Warden Brothers TC2000 that you see in the middle there, and uh, across the top here you can see the prices. And it is the macro is continually running, which is basically telling TC2000 to export the file and export it to a uh, directory on my computer. And then also, as soon as after it's exported, it invokes a macro in my Excel file that uh, reads the. Uh, data file that's exported from TC2000 and updates the uh, spreadsheet. And the black line here over here on the right, when it comes back again, is the price action. Uh, and the uh, big red wave there is the, uh, I call it big red, it is the uh, biggest amplitude and the lowest frequency wave of the discrete Fourier transform. And uh, the other side waves you see there on the right are the uh, discrete Fourier transform other waves. Uh, now let's see. This, uh, this, uh, file is uh, 128 uh, although you can see by that amplitudes of the data point um, discrete Fourier transform and uh, what it does it is takes the 128 stock prices which by the way are every minute up to the current minute and uh, it uh, Curve fits really, uh, it's just a regression analysis really of uh, the 128 stock data points, and then uh, it will generate. Uh, I believe there's for 128 data points, I believe there's only 64 sine waves, uh, but you can see all the waves there and how many there are, which reproduces. All these black curve line, uh, points uh, very accurately as to the data. It's like running a, a regression analysis using a, a 128 data point regression analysis. You you exactly for 128 order polynomial and curve fitting each data point to it. So very accurate. And uh, so you can see the, uh, I call it the big red, and um, 
so eventually they and you can see here in this bar graph as it comes back this bar graph of the, the gold uh, bars are the amplitudes of the different waves and you can see that I'm going to put a marker on big, big red is the one the largest amplitude is about twice the amplitude of the next one. Now the uh, big red is the 1024, I believe. And so the uh, next one would be the uh, double, or we'll double that frequency. So uh, now that isn't always the case. Uh, looks like it's quit running. There we go. Sometimes that micro bombs out and I have to re record it. Now, uh, over here in the middle, you see the TC2000. Now, I went short, uh, I think, when Big Red peaked back here. And it's been decreasing, you can see. See how the black price line has decreased. So I'm ahead to $820 here. And this was by going short. Now, so if you follow, the idea would be pretty much to go short when the price peaks and go long when the price reaches the dip. Now, so you can see that the uh, black price is somewhat following the curve of the big red sine wave. Now, the uh, price action is really the sum of all these waves, including big red plus that one plus all of these others. So uh, you ever wonder why the uh, stock market jitters around as much as it does? It's because it's the sum of all these waves. Now, the, uh, the uh, amplitudes do change, uh, and uh, the next uh, amplitude down may get uh, become a greater percentage of the highest amplitude. So that's how the uh, program matches the price. But it, that messes with the uh, curve so that you can't always rely upon the sine wave staying the same into the future. It's just that uh, generally, I mean, you can pretty much be sure that uh, the big red, uh, if it stays the dominant one, sometimes the next one does get uh, become... Um, higher than big red but not very often well, we were watching a while here uh i hate to get spend too much time on the video because it does uh it's hard to uh, email it to people uh, maybe i can put it on one drive or something like google drive where people can access it or i just post it on youtube as a video so here we see uh, go by going short I'm up to over a thousand dollars now a thousand and twenty dollars and then that just dropped uh, under a thousand now it's a thousand ten nine seventy nine fifty so but now uh, the uh, you see big red now has been going below in the negative territory and let's see the price uh, I'm gonna stop I don't the have a zero light on the price, the market, the, uh, but you can see that black line is still following, uh, somewhat following the big red sine wave. And um, let's see what else I can show you about this. Uh, I really highly recommend the TC2000 program. Uh, it allows you to uh, trade, and, and it also allows you to just trade on paper.
but uh, by uh, really the scheme I would use would be basically you want to trade when Big Red is mm, approaching its peak or, or approaching its dip and then follow the next side wave, the next largest one and uh, like you would want to uh, trade by the uh, a peak, say here is peak uh, in that black line. But you can see the see how the see how the peak there that's in the price occurs coincides with the peak in those other two sine waves. See that wave and that wave is where that peak occurs. Now this uh, that red or maroon line right here is the average of the waves. And you can see well the average of waves is if the price is the sum of the waves, that average is going to be the uh, show the curve of the price also. And you can see then how we've got these dips occurring simultaneously with the price, and that's because that's just showing you that the uh, discrete Fourier transform is working. All right, we're up to uh, thirteen hundred and fifty dollars. See that price just keeps coming down. Now, um, and I might mention now, if you don't like going short, that uh, for this is the SPXL. The SPXL is three times volatile of and matches three times the movement of the S&P. Uh, there's also another one, electronically traded fund, where it uh, goes just the opposite, and that's the SPXS. SPXS is in Sam. And uh, so rather than going short, you can just buy SPXS, and it will do the same thing as going short on the SPXL. Uh, its price is different, uh, but if what I found is really if I'm uh, uh, trading and watching the SPXL, sometimes it doesn't follow it exactly. You know? But uh, I think by playing on the long haul, usually a cycle is mm, about every two hours. To go from peak to peak is about two. Uh, to peak to peak on the big red is usually about two hours. Uh, so if you're playing it uh, using this discrete Fourier transform by the minute, uh, it uh, it uh, so you'll be trading or switching it over about every hour. Uh, but you can see that the, the other sine waves do matter. And let's see where we're getting. Right now we're right here. And you can run those sine waves on out to a, a future date or time. And, uh, and well, that's what's been done here. You can see by running those sine waves on out, I've generated this average curve, see, which is telling the future price prediction, you might say. But it's highly unreliable. Because the sine waves do change, the amplitudes change, but it looks like you can see there's about five or six different waves that are dominant, and the big red is really almost twice the size of the others. When that's the case, you can pretty much just trade by the big red. But when the next one down gets lar uh, larger, uh, you need to take both into account. I'd say when they get over 75% uh, of the uh, max, you need to keep them, uh, keep track of them. And then the more you use this, the more you get used to it. Uh, sometimes the price kind of stalls, uh, especially uh, right near close. A lot of times, what you the price action by following the sine waves would normally be going 
time for it to go down, and it doesn't go down. Sometimes you're close. Bulls take over, and they keep the price going up. Or the bears take over and keep it going down. And rather than advancing along the sine curve, it seems like other small or higher frequency waves are being altered to keep the uh, market going in, the, in a bear market or a bull market. So just think of it, it's really just a regression analysis with a, a 64 order polynomial, polynomial being fitted to. It's just fitting the data. But sometimes it follows, it just follows the waves. Uh, and you can see there how much is following that side, that red sound wave. I just keep playing it. Uh, now, um, as far as running the program, what this uh, is doing. If you see it, see it type in tcdata.csv there real quick. And type that into the uh, TC30. Typing it into the uh, TC2000 program and saving it to my directory, which is under D drive. It's one uh, AA trading directory. And uh, and the name of the file is tcdata.csv, and uh, when it, and then the macro comes over and clicks on the Excel file, and I press I press Control U to have it run the update macro in the Excel file. Maybe down some more. Uh, this works out pretty pretty good yeah, though, you see, with that micro recorder. I, you buy that micro recorder for about 50 bucks, and yeah, it's a one time it's purchase. It's not a subscription. Yeah. And uh, TC2000 yeah. is about 50 bucks per month. Uh, you see, I'm up to $1,400 now. And uh, let's see where we are. You can look, if you look at the black price line, you can see the main sine wave that's in it, the uh, big red. You could almost do this without the uh, discrete Fourier transform. But uh, watch it by after coming up with the discrete Fourier transform, you understand why stocks move the way they do. And uh, most of the time, like uh, when you get the end of the day peak and, and then or the end of the day drop, that's really it's it's really reaching its max or min for that two hour period, and uh, it seems like it holds it off and keeps going higher or lower, and then the next day it reverses and goes down a lot. All right, well that looks like that's the end of the video, and so I'll stop the recording here.